Hey people, this is Amani. Welcome to my podcast, Chat to Amani, hashtag Brain Babble, a little offshoot from our app fight for Amani Instagram page. I hope to document and share the highs and the lows and everything in between of my life since being diagnosed with incurable brain cancer. So in today's episode, I thought I'd just sit down and share my experience of my NHS treatment for my brain tumour. A lot of people with a brain tumour actually have an operation before they start radiotherapy, but because of the location of my tumour, that wasn't possible. Um, Still, the standard is six weeks of radiotherapy and chemotherapy together. You have to go in for kind of like a preparation meeting with the oncologist. I remember sitting in the room with the oncologist and my parents as well, and they were just talking us through the process. They also explained kind of like potential side effects, get a mask made of your face for radiotherapy. It was really strange because, this is going to be really strange to say, this part of making the mould was actually quite enjoyable. It was like really warm and they put like these strips of kind of like a hot towel over your face. Luckily I'm not claustrophobic, you know, it didn't really panic me. They lay it across your face and then it's warm and then you just have to sit and wait for it to kind of dry and then they peel it off you. And that mask is made and it has to be exactly the shape of your face. Once you've had that initial meeting you do just kind of want to get going just get started because the quicker you start the quicker you finish so actually the day before I was meant to start um, I tested positive for COVID and we were really really lucky actually in the sense that I was still able to go ahead with my radiotherapy Um chemo did get delayed a little bit um, but pretty much we were able to start quite soon after so I remember going for my first session obviously my parents couldn't come with, in with me so we had these accessibility coordinators one really lovely lady called Lauren she would come up to the car and walk me into the building and to the the room that I was meant to be in if there was ever a wait you know she would sit and she would like talk to me and she really would you know put me at ease so the first session I guess I didn't really know what to expect every single time I remember it crossing my mind my gosh but what if they make a mistake what if I answer wrong what my name is which why would you do that but you know all these things play on your mind you know what if they angle it wrong what if something happens it's just like a huge kind of cold table you have to lay down on it they bring that mask out and that was obviously the first time I'd actually seen it made and it's really really hard plastic there's literally no room for movement um they put it down over your face there's a teeny hole at where your like nostrils are and an even smaller hole where your mouth is and they basically put have these metal clips and they they make a really loud noise actually when they clip you down and you're really like completely there's no way you can move your trap it's, it's really horrible but obviously you know the reason why they're doing it they, they turn the machine on and it makes all these kind of noises it's really hard to explain it's not really really noisy but you can, can hear the whirring of the machine you don't feel anything you can't see anything either just close my eyes because it is quite quick it's like seven minutes I think then I would just pray I didn't want to open my eyes I didn't want to think about anything else I would just kind of pray for all the things that I hoped like that I hoped the treatment would work that I hoped that I would you know that I pray that I would get better um, and pray that I'd be able to get through this, all those kind of things. I think at first it just became like a routine, obviously, you'd get up every day and you'd go, but as time kind of went on it got more and more difficult for me. I had a bit of, you know, emotional trauma kind of go on midway and that really, really affected me. I kind of lost the will to keep going and my fight at that point, but You still have to take the chemo at the weekends. It was a low dose, so I was lucky the side effects weren't really extreme. But I just remember getting really, really upset because, you know, all my family would count down for the weekend and I would get really upset and say, no, it's not a break. I don't feel normal. You know, who on their days off on the weekend has to get up and, you know, take chemo tablets? That's not normal. Um, So, you know, it did start to wear me down. Another thing I remember so distinctly about taking chemo is the fact that mum had to glove up to handle the tablets because of how like toxic they were and they were very like you know they really told us to be very careful with what we touch make sure to always wash your hands and it's just insane to think that I was actually putting those tablets in my mouth and swallowing them and they were going inside of my body and that's meant to help
I did experience hair loss, not completely, but almost like patches, because obviously that is wherever they kind of aim the radiotherapy beam. That's where I lost my hair. I think out of everything that really bothered me the least, the most distinctive thing about radiotherapy, it's like this burning smell. And I just remember that it would like follow me everywhere I went. Whilst I was trying to sleep, I'd get this sudden really strong burning smell and it would really make me panic and make me really upset and anxious. And that would happen whilst I was trying to rest or even just when I was in my house or even down the street and it would really cause like a lot of panic because the treatment and all of that it was just it was traumatic I also remember really really struggling to sleep because my mind was just constantly racing the radiotherapists were really nice to me but they kind of noticed how I was deteriorating as the time went on that I was weaker I was quite shaky I remember feeling really really anxious before I had to go in I would often get out of the car before I got called in for my like allotted time that I would have to do a walk kind of around the little courtyard they had and really take deep breaths and try and prepare myself to you know go in And I was on a lot of other meds at this point, including the steroids, which, you know, make you put on a lot of weight and your face kind of swells. So I I do remember another thing was as it got nearer the end of the six weeks that the mask was tighter and tighter and it was more difficult for them to put it on and I just felt more and more restricted. Um, My sisters made an advent calendar actually with like teeny brownies in to help me count down the days till the end of radiotherapy. I remember... So after the six weeks, you get some time off. It gives you time for your body to recover because it is really, you know, really aggressive, especially when it's on the brain. And then they'll put you on a higher dose of chemo. And this can be from nine to 12 months, quite a few cycles. And I only did the first cycle. And then I was getting really, really bad head head pain my symptoms were getting worse I was like struggling with a lot more things than I was before so they moved forward my scan MRI scan it was moved forward as an emergency to just see what was kind of going on and that's when they told us that the tumor had progressed and that basically the chemo and radiotherapy and everything that I had gone through hadn't worked in fact instead of shrinking the tumor it had grown by 94 percent I mean that was terrifying so I've got my dad here now because I just want to talk about the steps that we took once we realized that the NHS treatment hadn't worked for me I remember even before we got to this point that dad was always suggesting things to the doctor in meetings and I used to get really frustrated because I couldn't really understand why we needed to talk about all these other options when I hadn't even started or finished chemo or radiotherapy but now obviously in hindsight I know that my dad was just ahead of the game and he knew that unfortunately for my tumour there are such limited treatment options and the ones that do exist the likelihood of them working aren't that great. So dad? Yeah so I mean right from the beginning really even the doctors suggest chemo and radiotherapy they're just saying it's a at best it is a temporary halt to the growth of the tumor so we had to look at alternatives what we're going to do next your oncologist suggested lomastine which is another chemotherapy drug and the first question we asked him was well what's likelihood it's going to work and he gave us figures of anything between 10 to 20 percent which is i mean really quite clear that it's ineffective and so We'd already made inquiries with uh, Oncoceutics, which make this trial drug that had been suggested to us, and asked for it on compassionate grounds. And their response was that, no, we can't give you the drug on compassionate grounds in the UK. Uh, What you can do is fly over to the US and join one of our trials. The problem we have is that you're a known condition to fly. And everyone knows the US insurance system is absolutely extortionate. Uh, US was not an option. We'd discovered that there was possibly a biosimilar, so a copy drug available in Germany, that it was being used by basically anyone outside the US with your condition who couldn't actually source the official drug. Biggest concern, myself and and my brother-in-law, we flew over after uh, doing the GoFundMe page in uh, the end of August, which, as you know, raised 100,000 pretty much in 24 hours. We then started the drug, I think, the following day with you. So once a week I take four tablets which is so less intrusive than the treatment that I was having 
I think in total is it a thousand pounds? Yeah, a thousand pound a week. So basically. a thousand pounds a week, and it was just you know an insane amount of money. It is actually incredible to think that, as far as we are aware, I haven't really experienced any serious side effects from it, and it's shown, alhamdulillah, we're very grateful, a lot more promise than the treatment that I'd had before. At this moment, it definitely seems to be working we're just very fortunate and thankful to everyone who did donate um that we were even able to explore this there is obviously a worry that potentially your tumor can become resistant to it um and it might stop working but we hope it doesn't come to that point but i know that my dad is a very smart man we are always keeping an eye out for other treatments and hopefully eventually onc does become available under the nhs i mean there's some a lot of interesting science about immunotherapy but it's just not quite there yet so we really need this medication to work for a couple of years hopefully until scientists can get to that stage where the immunotherapy way is treat- teaching you your own t-cells to fight the disease from the inside um, also the other problem is that these treatments are extortionate not everyone is, is as fortunate as we were with our gofundme and the treatments at the minute are almost barbaric if you think about it i think you know when we look at medical history back in the day we think oh my gosh i can't believe they did that but i'm pretty sure in decades to come people will look back at radiotherapy and chemo and the effects that it has on people and think they can't believe that people had to go through that so you know we are hoping that treatments will get better and keep developing yeah, we are way behind other countries in Europe and US when it comes to treatments for brain cancer, way behind. Complete lack of investment of the last decade. And we where we were once at the forefront of medicine, other countries are steaming ahead and we're just picking up their research. We're just not having enough trials or resources put towards searching for a cure. I think that's obviously partly why we want, like, especially want to share our story because without highlighting this, people don't know because we had no idea that this was the case for brain tumours in particular. Yeah, it's just it's just not right and the spotlight has to be shone on it and attention has to be brought, otherwise no one's going to care. Thank you, Dad, for joining You're me. You're welcome. Not that you had a choice. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but um, And thank you, obviously, for everything that you've done for me. No, so. I think we've got to also say a big thank you to your Uncle Barber, who's oh, been yes, pivotal definitely. for doing the scientific research, and obviously your mum Yasmin, who's also been pivotal. So I think it's like a, we're like a, Joint we're, team. yeah, the three amigos or a dream <laughs> team, really. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for listening. We hope it was informative, and hopefully, that, like we said, it will continue to work. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Everyone has their fight, so let's ready our armies and let the battle commence, because we're not going down without a fight. Like, comment, share and subscribe. (laughs) I've always wanted to say that.